Well, we arrived on uh, Flat Home. Yes, not Steep Home because this is the flat one. Flat Home Island. And I always used to look at this because I used to live over there in Barry. And I was like, what's that island? How can you get out there? And of course, being a kid, there's no way. But now I'm an adult and I've got one of these, or rather, I'm a big kid. Uh, uh, yeah, we made it over. It would have been quicker to come over from Wales, where I used to live, and I live in that direction, so I brought some friends. Got well, Mr. Dylan, <laughs> mad base jumper, and his girlfriend. Hello. Hi. How are you doing? <laughs> Keris. I don't, I, don't, I don't like doxing people. Sorry, you have to sort of tell me if it's all right. <laughs> there we are, Keris, Hi. Dylan, and uh, we got the rest of the mad crew up here. We just found out um, that we have to pay but I, I don't wear a wig, so um, I don't know what they're on about. So. I mean, if there's landing and departure, the private craft has done at owner's risk, so. Yeah, the only person who looks like he's got to pay is this wig wiggy b bastard by Ella. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, what a view. View. What a view! I never thought I'd be seeing this. Actually, it's absolutely crazy. And uh, yeah, they're saying they're saying there's a fee. If you come to the island, there's a fee. So, where do I collect my fee from for coming on the island? It says, oh. must be a fee they give you for your mad ability to get on here so they pay you in recognition of your excellence I don't blame them but uh, here we go so send the money you know the address send the money to my address and that'll be great so we've just got to watch the water because it's going to be rising now over the next few hours now it's one of the highest tidal days of the year it's 12 meters today spring tide so it's going to go all the way from down there all the way to up there and when it does that we's gonna have a slight problem because the boat is right at the top and we're hoping the boat doesn't go floaty floaty so we've tied it off because we don't want to make the same mistakes as we did at uh, Drake's Island where we came back and it was the water was nearly taking the boat for a float that would have been fatal we'd have to have got somebody to go and grab the boat and tow it back to us which would have been pretty crap but uh, yeah it was quite knackering getting the boat up the beach and oh, we're not even going to talk to you about how we got the boat in the water because we missed the highest tide and you needed the highest tide to use the slipway and we were one hour late and the, the water was racing off down the beach because this is Western Supermare and the, it literally can race away faster than you can walk at times on the beach in Western Supermare. So, and the converse is true. If you're walking around out on those mud flats and you think, oh look, and the, the teeth sea starts coming towards you, you won't be able to run fast enough to get back in and you'll get caught and the hovercraft will have to come and get you. So it's getting windy now. Here we go. Oh look, it's like a dirtle door, look. It's like dirtle door. I never knew about that. That's really cool. Wow. It's a little hole thing, and this looks like a slipway for the uh, for reliance on money. But uh, there is a boat house there, but it can only let the boat out at the highest tides. Because if you notice, that uh, you'll just go down the ramp and onto the stones. Really good. So we're going to wait for the tides to come up, and trust me, it'll come all the way up. It's one of the highest tidal range areas in the world. And there's two places. Believe it or not, you'll think I'm making this up. I ain't making this up, right? Right, this is one of the highest tidal areas in the world. River Seven, okay? Barry Docks and Cardiff Docks are one of the highest tides. I think Barry Docks is one of the highest tides in the world. So it comes up the highest and pops the lowest, okay? Guess where the other place is that has the highest tides? It's where they film Jaws. I think it's called Amity. Amity in America and they have the highest tides as well so oh, at the moment the tides are on their way out which means that that's up towards the seven bridge which you can just about see up there okay so the tides are coming out now and dropping later on at well in about 30 minutes they'll start coming back in 
So the water will start filling up and the water will be going that way. At the moment the water is coming this way, but in, in a minute the water will be coming that way. So I'd rather get, if my engine died, I'd rather get pushed up into the River Severn than out towards the sea. So, mm. I've actually been told that the worst waves are upstream not out towards the sea so if the tide changes you're going to get much worse waves further towards the inland part of the river seven mm. look what we've got here we've got a uh, foghorn which as a child i used to hear this foghorn regularly this foghorn would be making a lot of noise and sort of went Arr -arr 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 so I always used to wonder where that noise was coming from. Well, here you, here you got it. So. Wow. This is uh, Chris of KK Explores. Hello. How are you doing, sir? I'm all right, thank you. Good, good. Yeah. Check out his channel. And his explores. Is it KK climbing? No, explores. that's the other one. <laughs> Definitely KK explores. KK explores, but yeah. there's a KK climbing as well, isn't yeah. there? Another one. Yeah. KK adventures. Ah, right. Kink, kinky adventures. Right. Okay. We don't want. Kinky we, explores. No, we don't want to know about those. <laughs> Later, sir. When I've stopped recording. <laughs> How much does it cost? <laughs> Shh, don't tell anybody. Right now, um, but yeah, it's. Uh, I don't think so. It's quite a small island. I've flown over this in my microlight, going from uh, Cardiff, Wales, flying over, you know, to uh, Breen, I think it was, which is that that land point there. That's Western Supermare. You can see in the middle, it's Western, and there's Breen. Now the funny thing is, we can see Western Supermare here, but standing on the beach. Back there, because of the curve of the earth, you can't see Western Supermare from the beach at Barry. You can see hills in the distance, but you can't see where the beaches are, and you can't see where all the fun and excitement is, because it, all you can see is hills off in the distance. And um, I remember that as a kid, like getting the binoculars out and looking and thinking, well, where is Western Supermare? I swear it's over there, or I didn't know about the curve of the earth. And I always used to go, well, what's wrong with these binoculars? And why can't I see? Why am I not, not strong enough? Urgh, where is it? And I was and I was looking on the map, and I'd be like, I swear it has to be somewhere out there. And it's like, nope, you can't see it. So, yeah. All you see is lights at night over that way. Yeah, I think it's something to do with that. Ugh. Oh, it'd be deafening, wouldn't it? Does that still work? I don't know. So we've got some solar panels over there. That could be for uh, residual power, yeah. Uh, whichever you prefer. I'm easy. I'm just happy to be here. I mean, this has been a childhood dream for me to come over and see this place. I mean, I used to live over there. Right, I'll, I'll show you where I lived now. Hang on. Eh, let me just work this out. Let me just work this out. See see those um, the, the, the big um, white things, like triangle bits, yeah? That's Cardiff Arms Park. That's the National Stadium. And you've got a pier at Penarth. You've got Sully Island, which should be somewhere... There's Sully Island. I'll tell you a ghost story about Sully Island. The captain's wife. Yes, she went. He, he was supposed to throw her overboard when she died on the ship, but the captain decided that he would break the maritime tradition and he'd bring the body home. And he brought the body home and he hid it in the house, ready to get a burial sorted out for her. And the body went missing. And there was a ghost haunting was in the house and in the uh, and in the surrounding area. And years later, when they were building the pub, they found the skeleton of a, a woman in the walls. Oh, wow. They gave it a proper burial, and they reckon all the all the haunting stopped. No way. Yeah. And the, the pub is called the Captain's Wife because of the ghost story. Oh, you know who'd like to hear that? Uh, yeah, yeah. And that's that little island that's there. It might not look like an island. But you see where that boy is in the water? Yep. Just up and to the left of it, that's an island. Now, you can see that when the tide is low, which it is at the moment, you can actually see a land walkway. 
and you can walk across the island you've got a limited amount of time and it literally has a counter and it's like counter starts now and it's like a counter and you've got to get across there and get back otherwise you'll be stuck out there for several hours and they will charge you to take you off if you don't like being on the island yeah yeah they charge you it's cost you about 200 quid to get taken off the island yeah maybe that could be one of our next events yeah <laughs> So going beyond that a little bit more, that's Barry. That's Barry all along there. So I used to live in that next bit along wow. there. And that um, tower there is miles away. That's Aberthaw Power Station. That's a power station. So you still you, you used to look across I the don't know. I used to look across at, at these islands, yeah. And I used to think, what's here? It was very hard to see this one because it's so flat. And, uh, but it was easy to see um, Steep Home. But I always used to wonder what they were and, you know, think it'd be nice to come over here one day. But as a child, no resources to do it. Yeah. It's a bit smaller than I thought it would be. I always thought we'd be walking for ages and ages. But, like, you can see the other, other side of the island quite, uh, quite easily over there. So... Lots of seagulls here. It is a seagull colony, and it is an uh, it is an animal preserve as well. There's a generator here. Yeah. On on a day like this, if you get problems with your wind, take a sock. No, seriously. Um, <laughs> yeah. Take a take a. <laughs> Yeah, take an emodium, yeah. Um, no, get a sock. Put a sock on the end of your phone. Sam. Yeah, no, um, Dylan. Yeah, you suggested that, but they're soaking wet. Oh, shit. <laughs> Mine are actually quite dry. Yeah. Sock is a good way to stop extreme wind noise on a day like today. Yeah, you just put it across the end because um, if the microphone's on this end, you just put it, you just put it across there like that, and it'll just just cover it up. If you have got a bit of fuzzy foam with you, or fuzzy fur, faux fur. Hello, what's this say then? These gates commemorate Anthony Fraser Sharp, 1942 to 2005, the secretary of the Flat Home Society, who believed that one ho one day the fog horn would sound again. So, maybe when he died. 2005 the foghorn wasn't being used so maybe it wasn't in use there was another foghorn that's right up like Dinnis Dinnis Powys or somewhere up there I think it or right up the coast near Abathor there's one further up there you can drive to it on the land okay. so it might have been that one that was going yeah yeah there's a derelict building there right? you see the roof's all missing yeah yeah and there's all the forts around the edge as well we'll have to go and see in a bit there's lots of forts here so you got... think it was smaller than you expected? It is a lot smaller than I was expecting, actually, yes. Um, oh, this is all boarded up. So it's definitely out of use, then. Yeah, it's definitely out of use. Dylan's up there, look, on his, uh, on his horn. <laughs> Dylan's got his horn. <laughs> you, need, you need to get in it, Dylan. Yeah. I've got the horn! Get it, get... See if we can get inside it. <laughs> Horn! Go for a walk. Brave people. So obviously the equipment is still in here. There's a nice uh, plaque. I wonder if it is actually locked. It says keep out. Yeah, it's locked um, somehow inside. Hmm. It's a shame. Oh look, I wonder if that would be into start and stop it. Or maybe just turn the lights on. Probably the second one, the boring one. Mm. Fuel tanks which would have been for running said beastie. Oh yeah, because it was a 
really small horsepower engine with a mm. 11 horsepower, something like that. Right. Oh, well, I suppose we'll have to go up. We'll have to go up. Um, I'm just thinking if I... Uh, oh. Mm -hmm. mm, no, it's okay. Mm. Here we go. <laughs> These feel... These feel like wood. Yeah, right. they, yeah, yeah I know. Mmm. <laughs> How does it feel like wood? Fiberglass, yeah. Don't trust fiberglass. Don't trust fiberglass. Oh shit. Fog horn. Wow. That's interesting. Yeah, you can see the pipes that come up and go out into the horn. Mm. There's no way to like hang down and swing and get inside the horn then. Uh, Hard work that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, no, because it goes it goes down into the tiny pipes. Yeah. If there's, any, if there's any, anyone on the planet who could get in there, oh, it is a bit easy. I was going to say it'd be Dylan, but it's not too bad this side. <laughs> Ooh. Beautiful. <laughs> you can get like, right like, in. Way, way back. They probably hear if you shout, they probably hear you in. Uh, yeah, up on the Avon, Avon Gorge. Yeah. Let's get the old dirt uh, thrown out then for a bit of fun.
well I've just had an awesome drone drone flight and uh, yeah we're flying around around the Foghorn around the lighthouse absolutely superb and looking at my old hometown of Barry where I grew up absolutely amazing so why don't we go and check out what Sam and Jess and everyone else are doing because uh, they're all walking off now oh but they did get inside the foghorn now but apparently there is a way in so I'm gonna go and have a look see if I can see my way into the foghorn whoa so let's see, see what's going on inside the foghorn I want to get inside the fog horn. Get down this. Get down this bad boy first. Mm. There's a way in. Don't know where it is, but Sam, Jess. Oh, hello. Did you get in? The door's just open. Wow. Why is it taking a bit to get adjusted to this dark in here? Wow. Little engines, three engines, three engines. So maybe for ultimate redundancy, no, one, two, three, four, five, six, mm -hmm. six engines. Maybe because you know you can't take a chance with the others not working, so you've got to have the all of them working. Just look at all that. God, Ian from IKS, you would like this, you'd like this a lot. L Gardner and Sons. Patricroft Manchester. Wow. Look, oh, look at all this electricity. Amperes. Lower, raise. Take load, shed load, stop. Emergency. Emergency start. No. Not an emergency stop, an emergency start. All the switches there. Oil pressure, voltage fault, fuse alert, temperature alert, speed fault, lamps test. Amperes. Uh, that's the voltage and this is the cycles, 50 cycles, 45, 55. Wow. And the whole thing's held up, the ceiling is held up by emergency joists just to make sure that it doesn't fall down. They're all the same look, so it's got, you know, six, six generators and that doesn't look quite the same. Maybe that's the pump. So these are pumps, but they're generators connected to pumps and these are generators for electric. So... Yeah, what's this then? Ipswich, England. Reval and Company Limited. Yeah, I don't know, this looks like a pump. Some sort of pump. Wow, and these are uh, pressure containers. SW55 PSI. So this is maybe where the pumping went in for the air, for the foghorn, so it would do a surge possibly. It would fill these tanks, then blow out, then fill again, then blow out because it did used to sort of have a a regular kind of you know sort of distance between the uh between the the sound so maybe that was a charging time did Dylan tell you about the guy that ran a phone this thing? no he died in 2005 and his one wish was to hear that foghorn one last time but he never got to go yeah it they've got a plaque for him on the uh, thing and it said it was one wish his one wish just was to hear it go one more time Maybe we need to get over here with a generator and uh, <laughs> yeah. sound system. Get a big enough sound system. We like wah 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 wah. Yeah. So what have we got down here then? It's another room. Ooh, just full of full of junk, full of oil. Oil. Oh yeah. It's a storage room. Not an awful lot in here. Back door. Oh, these are solar panels, are they? In, yeah, in the thing. Yeah. Wow. Solar panels, unused. Yeah. Goodness. So you've got a ladder then to get up. Looks a little bit rusty, but I think that looks pretty safe. 
Wow. So now we're climbing up. Now, how many people ever would see this in your life? They may not even let them do it when you come to see the Foghorn. How many people have ever been in here? It's like a spacecraft. It's like these little portholes. Wow. It says, notice to check the speed of the sirens, remove brass no school, only spider siren of siren not to be removed. Wow. I wonder if it was deafening in here or whether the noise was just outside past the horns. But I wonder if this was deafening. So we've got a light there, a little vent, vent at the top, and then the two horns, which yeah, which go out there. And you can see one points towards up the channel and one points down the channel. So one points down, out, down the channel. And there you go. So there's the horns. Whoa, there's the horns going into this sort of equipment here. Now there's electric cables which are uh, oh, that's just for a light. That's just for the light on the roof. And then there's... Ah, there's some sort of um, belt. Oh, yeah. There's a belt here. And this belt is going around these things. And I think that the, the sound is just made right here. It's not made with air. Or is it made with air pressure? Oh, because right. maybe these open and close, maybe these will go... Row. Wow, maybe it's an open and close valve system. And this is the air pressure is coming up through the thing here. This is the air. You've took the other one off this side. So yeah, you'd only had one one opening. But it might have been just a valve to kind of open, close, open, close. Hmm. So I don't know. But it, uh, as you can see here, you've got that thing there and a... Uh, fan belt basically a car fan belt I wonder if this was a valve or maybe it was to produce a warbling sound maybe it was a wow 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 or something like that you know or it might have just been wow wow yeah open close hmm very interesting pipe coming in top of that there this one then, do you reckon? Oh, it's just a box. Step up so you can look out the window, yeah. A little oil, yeah. Step up to look out the window, yeah. And a pipe. Pipe. Goes into the top. Wow. It's quite quiet up here. The it wind. Is, yeah. Wind is not very loud, so that's great. What a treat. What a treat to see that. Sam's on his way down. So it's time for me to put this in my mouth. I'm drawing home. Wow, so who'd have thought it? And I don't think it'd take a hell of a lot to get to get these working, really. Old engines like this, they, they do hold hold up quite well. But uh, yeah, so there we go. There's a, another little room in here. Oops, caught on the door. There's another little room in here. And, uh, and that's it. Oh, some switches, some switches. Compressor A, compressor B. Oh. So, uh, wow, what's the sound here then? Someone here. Is there? Yeah. In the, uh, the main house. Really? And he said leave? Yeah. You don't need. 
25 or something. Yeah, he wouldn't even come near me. I was walking towards him. I couldn't hear him. The fucking seagulls were going. Yeah. I was about fucking 10 meters away and I was walking towards him and he uh, said, Can you just know where you are? He had to put off the island because I'm not Oh, right. No worries. So he went back in his house. Back door. Yeah. He had to run to get in there. So. Oh. What's down there then? Uh, I went down there, but there's nothing down there, man. Should probably shut it back up. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So you've got uh, these. Um... So I wonder why the guy is um, stressing out, like, you know, that we we leave, we don't have to go near him. Yeah. Yeah. He's on there, think, the vegan ginsters pasty. Oh, yeah. yeah. Nice. What do you think about... Yeah, just be careful when you close the door, because it's pretty rotten, that wood. Yeah. So we just close it behind us. Mm. Now you can just open the door. So this is uh, bedrooms. Bedrooms. We want to stay here. And a uh, little. Um, this look, little living room. Oh yeah! What? So you can just like hire this place and live here. I think. It's obviously the toilets. And the kitchen. Hey, kitchen. You could get. You oh could. God. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, somebody can... Oh my god. Right. No. Check out the tunnels and bits and pieces down here, so. so we're walking towards this place that the guy doesn't want us to be. We got in here. Got uh, fortifications over there. Do you want to come over there and walk our way round? That looks more interesting because we're not really going to be able to go near his house, are we? I thought that was a boat hut, but it's not a boat hut. So there is no boat here, I don't think, that I can see. So there's this little, uh, this little shed with a mower. So a mower in there. I, say, I can't see the point in that somehow though. It's a bit overgrown for a mower. But uh, he's got a winch thing, he can winch stuff up. Well, 
it's a hoist but there's no there's no actual winch on it so uh, There's no, uh, there's no boat. We're over that away, and uh, we landed sort of where that old jetty would have been. But uh, yeah. to be careful, then. Oh, I see. You're going to winch stuff up and down, but. There's no uh, mechanism for the for the winch there. You know, just labour saving when you're just going to walk it a few feet up there maybe, but yeah. slightly labour saving. If you came here when the sea is up, you'd be able to go through the, uh, you'd be able to kayak through that uh, through that cliff. There's a dirtle door type hole. Kayak through. I might have even seen people do that. So now we've got some uh, pipe work and stuff that seems to be in some stuff that uh, may have been dug in because I think they some of the underground stuff here has been sealed off. Oh, right. oh look, that looks like it goes down. Oh, oh sugar. That's a shame. Mm. It's a shame. Oh, there's a big tunnel over there, though. A lot of this stuff has been bricked off. I heard this. Um, and these used to be the cholera, cholera, and uh, other things. People would be cholera and uh, quarantined on this island. So they've got uh, cannons here. Watch out for the rab rabbit holes. into the fort bits. Oh, I'm going to get stung here. I'm going to get stung. I'm going to get stung. Oh, not too bad. Wow. So, there you go. It's where the guns would have popped up. Would have popped up here. Now, I remember hearing about an ingenious gun invention here. Oh, really? Yes. Because, as you can see, this is quite high. You've got two choices. You either have a very high gun, which is up there, and you walk up to it, and then you can be seen by the enemy, or you have what they had here, which was a very Victorian invention, which was a spring-loaded gun. Uh -huh. So it was a spring-loaded system whereby when you fired the gun, the recoil of the gun brought it down on a spring system. It went chung and locked in place. You could reload it, and then you push a button and it would release the spring loading and it would slowly move back up into position under its own spring. You could fire the gun and then the recoil again would chung, would bring it back down. Wow. So it was literally, it was a self-lowering system. So the firing system would bring it down and then it would come back up once you reloaded it. Ching. Upon a bit of research, I found out the name of the gun is called a Montcrief gun. And as you can see here in its two positions, and then as the gun is fired, the recoil pushes it back and spring loads ready for it to reposition. So they unlock it, the spring activates, pulls it back up into position and it's ready to be fired again. Down again, so it was always hidden out of sight, so that they could uh, not be seen from anybody yeah, passing by. Cold. Enemies oh, coming up the channel, enemies coming up the channel could see the guns. Otherwise, so they would pop up, fire, pop down. I saw a picture of it last night. Yeah. Yeah. So apparently that was. This is probably where it was because I mean it would take a lot to get a gun to lift up there and uh, its own weight or to, to sort of like wind it up into position. But used its own energy. Used its own recoil energy. Yeah.
yeah guns today use their own recoil energy to to load the next round you know so the the the, the you when you fire the top fires back and then loads the next thing into the chamber and then springs forward. So guns are still doing that sort of... They're using the energy from the firing and the recoil not only to balance the weapon, to take the energy out of the firing so it doesn't kick. It doesn't kick. But it's also to use that to lock the next um, round in. So, yeah. Spring, spring-loaded spring recoil reload action. Reload action. Don't tell me you got stung and you got trousers on. Yeah, man. Wow, there's Wait, a cannon. You no, I didn't. <laughs> That's mad. Oh, is there one of the old cannons? Yeah. It's got its uh, emblem on the side. That's amazing. Oh wow! Look at that. I'm surprised that hasn't Already. disintegrated. Because um, even the ones down in Plymouth, you know, were kind of more deteriorated than this. But it could be because maybe, well, it was Victorian times, I think it was. Victorian thing, and it might have been from the war time. Maybe those ones down in Plymouth and Drake's were like hundreds of years old, whereas this is like a yeah, hundred. So. Yeah. Mm. The ones at Drake's Island were unbelievable, man. Yeah. There's so many of them as well. Just in situ, it was crazy. Yeah. Brilliant. Yes, deep home. So one more gun in placement. Now we may not get to check out Steep Home today if we haven't got enough time, because we do have to be really, really careful with these tides because we got caught out on the way out, so we definitely don't want to make that mistake on the way back. But if we can, if there is a way, if there's a jetty whereby we can get on no matter what the tide, we'll try and get steep home as well. But yeah, you can see, this is like, you gotta get right up there. Uh, you can't really. Hmm, what's down here? Oh, nothing. Yeah, get some of that merch, folks. <laughs> yeah. Power of foghorn. I know, it really surprised me. Yeah. Yeah. So the, that looks like an underground bit. Oh yeah, danger, keep out, you know what that means. That means get in there. Go in, yeah. That means get the hell in there. Do we carry that? No, it's okay if we're just going to come go come back out the same way. I carry it after this, so I don't come back. Okay. Wow. So, here you go, folks. Uh, buy Sam and Jess's merch, otherwise, I'm going to put a blur on her bo bottom end. <laughs> so, I'm going to blur it out. And you know I can do it. You've seen I can do it. I can blur this stuff out, folks, so buy the merch. Oh, here we go. Wow. Whew. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, wow. Steps down. It's like newer type brick though. Oh, it's hollow brick. Look. Hollow bricks. Way to teach. Yeah. Beauty too rich for use for earth too dear. The measured and watch, well watch our place and touching light makes less a rude hand did our hearts not love until now for the never 
for for one never saw the beast till and that's where they got killed <laughs> yeah. yeah so we've got some little breather breather holes interesting like the uh, chalk here it's nice in there yeah another room again oh got a hole to see in Ooh, this looks different so two two holes to pass things through or these might have been lighting holes remember from Plymouth where they would actually have glass uh, yeah, on either yeah. side and they put the light in the middle and it would because they were afraid that the uh, the flame from the candles would ignite so they would have the candle in there glass glass either side could be the lighting system there's a little uh, secret passage. Hatchway, yeah. Secret vault. Secret yeah. vault. Secret vault. I heard about that guy. She <laughs> wanker. This has got a this has got all the sense in that. Yeah. It's made it they're hollow bricks and that's newer. Seen yeah, newer. It's like weird. Hmm. Why would they have hollow bricks, folks? You Save money? Ooh, that's that's like spider. Ooh. Bad boy. He's a big one. Yeah, they've got. Looks like they've got a. Um, yeah, they've got something goes up to the surface. It's wow. capped off. Capped off. That might be a way they would bring the weapons down, lift them down, or this might have been a fire fireplace. Hard to believe it would have been. Although this looks like a plinth. Yeah. Ah, plinth, generator, uh, generator, chimney. chimney to the surface, maybe fuel wires or something, or mm -hmm. yeah, so maybe a generator room. This. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, that's the way we think it sounds like. Oof. Yeah, yeah. Egg sacks. Oh, oh my god. Egg sacks. That's an evil looking spider, that. Egg sacks. Egg sacks. Protect the president. Protect, protect the babies. Protect the president. Protect the babies. Egg sacks. Egg sacks. Protect the babies. Protect them. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what's that? Is that oh, 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 I just heard a cat then. That's really weird. Yeah, that's well. It's like... Yeah. Oh, oh, doesn't go any further. Oh, shit. Is that real? It's weird for it not to go any further. Wonder if it goes. Can't see anything. Air holes don't seem to go anywhere either. Mm, mm. Strange. Because we didn't see where it went down that little steep bit. Maybe that steep bit goes into the into the. Well, that ramp. Sort of that ramp. Yeah. It didn't look, and it didn't look like it really went anywhere. Mm. Well, at least we've seen some underground. I didn't expect that we would be able to today because yeah. I'd heard that it was all blocked up. Oh, and we've got uh, a little, little coal. The plague army. Stayed, I'm not sure. Well, it could be, yeah. I mean, it's obviously a safe haven. Might have had weaponry in you. The, the thing is about, they might have had weapons, because why would they have the little yeah. lights going between the rooms? Look, yeah. skull for guns. Ah. Skull for guns. Oh, yeah. wow. What is it? Uh, Artipid Saint Store. No, Store for Guns. N. N. Two, three, number one, two, three, four. Some of the other doors got signs on as well. Oh, yeah, yeah let's have a look. Same design. Oh, oh. Cool Shell Saint something. Whoa, what a butterfly. Yeah, he likes the light, doesn't he? Nope, nothing on that one. Mm. Wow. <laughs> Shell store again. Shell store. Do do. One 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 one. So yeah, that's if there would be no reason to have those um, little uh, things going between the rooms to, to put the glass between the naked flame, unless they were storing some sort of explosive in you. Yeah. I mean, it, God knows what it got used for after afterwards, you know, during World War Two or whatever, if it was in use. But um, mm. They say don't go in there, it's probably the safest place on the bloody island. <laughs> That's right, man. There she is. Oh. <laughs> oh.
Oh yeah, I've got that. Thank, Thank you very much. Mmm. So all of that is under this this little bit here. So I suppose if we if we came in, went sideways, went along, there's a little hole which might be a breather hole. But somewhere at the end might be this thing for the generator. There's a something that might have been a breather hole or it might have been a telegraph post or something. Gotta watch out for holes here. There's lots of rabbit holes. I'm looking for what that drop down, you know, the, the drop down that uh, you could have lowered the generator in through. So there should be a plate up here somewhere on the floor. Is that the same one we saw? That is. Oh, next to it, look. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. Next to it is the plate. So that would be the generator. But for some reason, that would have been accessible. Or do you think that's next to the generator? Because you know, on the wall, you had that. Maybe this is the flip, the the, the, where, the chimney. Yeah. So you had that's where they would have dropped the generator and lifted it down. Um, but maybe this is just where the exhaust fumes came out. Possibly. Because it's normally steps either. No. Yeah. It's not really accessible, is it? Chimney. Yes. <laughs> um, I say keep going round and we'll come to the lighthouse in the end. If we go down far enough, we'll avoid his house. I wouldn't mind checking out those ruins over there, though. Yeah. Do you want to go down here, work our way across, come to the ruins? Yeah, whatever you think is best, man. I mean, the thing is, we've done this side of the island now, so there is nothing on this side of the island. So if we if we come round, We'll meet all the fortifications, including that underground bunker there, which has got lots of little roofs, like alcove roofs, it looks. So uh, we can avoid this guy's house because apparently he said he's been in there since COVID and he hasn't left the island. And so he's all worried. So we just come to tell him that everyone's dead on the mainland and all those programs he's been seeing on television are just automatic repeats. We came, we came to rescue him. If he's been stuck on the island, and he, you know, since COVID started, you think he'd be glad to see people, but there's no counting for assholes. So, literally, I used to live over there. I used to live over there. sand on the down there but I wouldn't it, it just you know you'd never stay there for long enough because of the tides but yeah a bit, bit more sandy there's lots of rocks here that have uh, obviously been used for smashed up and used for things in the past there's a uh, sort of hole Um, weather station, weather station for uh, weather keeping. Uh, you see more cannons. Yeah, got some more fortifications coming up. Oh, hello. This looks interesting. Seems to go underground, possibly. It's just a little room.
So that goes down to the beach. And then we've got um, cannons. Wow. of those drop downs in there so that would have been hoisted up in the air on that mechanism so here's some of these uh, little buildings we flew past earlier on which might just be lookout posts of some description so just little uh, lookout post and possibly a gunnery gunnery position up the front gunnery gunnery position there seems like it's a round bit on the front oh, an ammunition store behind it possibly Without going in, gunnery position. It's got a WD point there. I don't know whether that's a trig point or something. But all this stuff is out on the cliffs, so uh, it's kind of a bit off limits. Dangerous. It's got a fence around it. I don't really see a building that's as small as that. but there is somebody actually living here somebody popped out and they've got solar panels here so they're probably producing quite a bit of power there but uh, they didn't want to see us they said no go away we're going to offer them uh, 500 quid like for landing fee you know a kind generous offer that I thought we'd better add, you know, because we don't like to take the mickey when we come to these places. But uh, he was like, no, just get away. I was like, oh, well, we did try to pay you 500 quid. You could have pocketed 475 of that and just put 25 quid in the, in the thing. But no, no, we didn't want to know. So what can you do? island nice little cliffs we going to see the ruins then on the way or we can double back then in that direction I think it's a few more bits yeah. but in July 1883 the steamship Rishanglius left three seamen on the island who were believed to be suffering from cholera one of whom subsequently died the only accommodation was a canvas tent. Subsequent to this, in 1896, the Marquis of Butte, then the owner of Flatholm, agreed to lease all the land that was not already in use by the military or the lighthouse to the Cardiff Corporation for £50 per year. The corporation then built a permanent sanatorium on the island for use by cholera patients. The building was described in the Lancet as a pavilion comprising two six-bed wards and a nurse's room. These would have been uh, hospital, hospital accommodation for the cholera victims. 
cholera patients, depending on which way you wish to look at it. And it was terminal being sent over here. The Flat Home Sanatorium is unique in being the only Victorian isolation hospital sited on a British offshore island. The last patient to die in the hospital, a victim of bubonic plague, was cremated on the island at the end of the 19th century. And the hospital finally closed in 1935 and has remained derelict since. Both the hospital main block and laundry block are grade two listed buildings and are considered to be at risk. I'd say pretty much uh, gone. It's quite overgrown this stuff, so. We'll see if we can find some photographs of when this was uh, a little bit more kept up. A slightly more modern building behind it. Oh, we certainly uh, upset the seagulls. They're like, get away. Get away from our babies. Oh, so there's equipment in here. Like a printing press or something. Oh no, it's um, a mower. Some sort of mower in there but uh, I don't think this island's ever been mowed I can't believe it it's ever been mowed hmm, a, what do they call them uh, jerry somethings or is it jerry jerry what do they call them these um, sure, jerry cabins or something what do they call them jerry somethings and they're like jerry huts Jerry huts. Yeah, that, those look like they would have. Yeah. On the 13th of May, 1897, a 22 year old Italian inventor named Guglielmo Marconi, assisted by a post office engineer named George Kemp, transmitted the first ever wireless signals over sea from Flatholm Island to Lavanock Point near Panath. Having failed to interest the Italian government in his project, Marconi brought his telegraphy system to Britain. Here he met Welshman William Priest. Marconi and Priest erected a 34 metre 112 feet high transmitting mast on flat home as well as a 30 meter receiving mast at Lavenock Point. The first trials on 11th May and 12th May failed but on the 13th of May the mast at Lavenock was raised to 50 meters and the signals were received clearly. The message sent by Morse code was are you ready? The original paper Morse slip signed by both Marconi and Kemp is now in the National Museum of Wales. Look at that to you, sir. Cheers, mate. Turn to the right, or do you want to walk past this house first? I think this is meant to be the visitor centre. I've seen uh, stuff in the past where people have uh, either hired this thing or you can hire, you know, hire it, folks. If you're interested in coming over here, you can actually hire some of these premises and you can stay. And I think the ham radio people have hired this in the past and they've actually done radio transmission competitions from like here. And there's the lighthouse. The lighthouse. Mm, flat home. It's probably locked. 
going to be locked. Yeah, it's locked. Ah, just flop down there. It's all open for us then. You go open it all up then. Oh right. Well that must mean that they're inside or up there. Yeah. That's pretty mad. Mm. Oh, sorry. By emergency I wash. Oh look, there's all their batteries there. That's where the batteries are charged up for the uh, for the lighthouse, the solar panels. Hey, more cannons out there. Bed in here, yeah, like somebody's little bedroom. Mm. It's off the edge of this steep home. Hopefully, we can get over there in a bit, but uh, we'll have to see if we've got time. Time and tide, wait for no man. Is that the saying? Time and tide, wait for no people with a sib boat. So let's get up here then. Mr. Sam's up here already. Let's try it out. Give it a whirl. See what we got. Here we go. Mm. Mm. That's bizarre. Unless they're back 50 years in the past and, uh, you know, gone into a portal and they've they've just that's all that's left of them now is they're just belongings no wonder they abandoned this island solar panels and there's this weird um flat concrete thing which is like just down there which is why why would that flat thing be there it seems a bit odd and there's um building over there that looks like wind lots of windows so maybe it's um Somewhere that bird watchers would kind of look out the windows and watch birds or something, I don't know. Here's the inverters and generator equipment inside here. There's their uh, diesel, diesel tank for the generator. <laughs> it's a Jess. It's a weird little key. Oh, and it is locked. minutes and 34 seconds left on his memory card. Wow. Oh, that's a hole, a hole cannon, right? Yep, and, and a little bunker hole lock. Oh, there she is. Watch it, it degenerates a bit. 
looks like the same sort of thing as the other one. Yeah, it goes sideways, got exactly the same thing there. Yeah, but this one goes out. Daylight. So we are look. Cartridge store for con con uh, for gun guns G U N S N O one two three or something. Yeah. yeah. Oh wow, it goes down. Oh god, it's filled with bones. Oh yeah. Oh my god, it's filled with bones. That's spooky. What's all that about them? Use this. Is this where somebody would be putting all their food remains or something and they built it up over time? Or have they been having sacrifices here of Jimmy Savile's Jimmy Savile's friends? Young friends. Mm. It's a bit serious, Sam. I think we've uncovered a conspiracy. Yeah. <laughs> In there, yeah, pipes. pipes yeah. Yeah. There's a little, uh, little air hole thing right there. Right. It's funny how you kind of step up out of this one. They maybe they had wooden floors in there at some point. That one's filled with bones as well. No way. It wouldn't have been cholera victim bones. They're quite small. They're quite small bones, aren't they? Hmm. Old bones. Dan Dixon, and you should have come. Bone graveyard, mate. <laughs> Bone graveyard conspiracy. Random Nautica. This is different, slightly different layout, isn't it? Yeah. Ooh. Generator room. This looks like it would have been uh, sided, metal sided, possibly. It would have been a cannon, but they've converted it into a fuel, fuel silo. Maybe a generator room, even. Generator, probably, isn't it? I reckon, yeah. Mm. Sort of square, yeah. Ah. I mean, I can't see them up in the lighthouse, so I'm guessing that's not that up. Hmm. Another generator? Different. Slightly steeper side to the island. Wow. Interesting. Steps down. I don't know if it's still accessible. Yeah, I don't know if we connected to this, did we? No. Nope. To be a bit careful, I think these steps have uh, disintegrated. Oh yeah, got little room 
rooms, side rooms. Whoa, and it's been blocked up. Blocked up. Blocked up. Little window. Whoa. Is it any Whoa. good down there? Or? Don't know, I'm just going to point my camera back and forth. Oh, there's a couple of rooms. Yeah, it does go into a couple of rooms. It just uh, just goes round to the left, and that's it. Is it? Yeah. Look up in there. Just collapsed down. Hmm. I'm going to check out what the beach situation is like with my with my drone. So uh, I'll do that in a second. Yeah. Oh, shoot. So just a bit of drone drone stuff and now we're just heading down across this weird bridge with a bridge with no purpose. Right, so we're just having a little walk around here. Looks like um, there's a small grave here. Which might be to somebody's dog. Oh. Oh. to somebody's, somebody's pet, probably. Faithful pet of the island. Uh, well, we've got a few more of these placements. That's about it, really. That's all she wrote. So... Yeah, so, I think we've just about done it now, haven't we? when you bring a Dylan on an island. Death defying acts. <laughs> nah, man. Screwdriver, that's about it, but it's back in the boat. It would have been a generator room in the past. <laughs> so there's lights on there, yeah. Oh, there's a little green light up on there. Thing. It looks like a generator room. Danger, keep out. Generator room. Oh, it's cool, this. <laughs> Like each one of those would have been a lookout post in the past because it had lots of windows looking out. Yeah. No, no, no. Mm, I know it's bizarre, I couldn't work out what that slope was for. Yeah.
So we're nearly, nearly back at the boat. Fingers crossed, the sea hasn't engulfed it, but that sea will be racing up when it does. It's a good photo on. Yeah, Glenn, Glenn's just gliding, so he's in the middle between the two things. So this is Super Vault here doing my uh I got big big wet thing on my head impression. So uh, yeah we're out um in flat home as uh you can see here and uh, it's very fine. Uh there we are. Oh hang on, they're up on the thing ready for photos look. Hang on. Sorry, need to take a photo. Glenn is on the rocks, as they say. Climbing up on top of a little dirtle door on plateau. There he is. Go on, my man. Go on, my son. Go on, my son. That's okay. He's got all the way up on there on his own. Look. What if he fell and we weren't there? That's okay. okay. So what do you think guys? Enjoy yourselves? Yes. Yeah? yeah worth it? Yes. Yeah, definitely worth it, man. There was a point where we were dragging that boat across the beach on the mud to try and chase the tide out. I was like, oh god, this is not gonna work, is it? And it's like it has. Fate. Yeah. We got back. I couldn't believe how far it gone out. Yeah. So all we can say is hello to um, whatever his name is at Wilton Estates and the miserable, miserable security guards because this is what we do for a living. Yeah, this is what we do for a living. So Wilton Estates, get down there today. Whoa, I feel like I've caught the sun again. I didn't think the sun was going to come out today, in fact. But now we're on the... Uh, Lee side of the hill, we're not getting a wind noise, which is quite nice. So, uh, there's the boat. Yeah, we'll probably get it, we'll probably push ourselves out early and uh, get moving. And that way, we can get a bit of time on steep home before we get home. And then we've just done everything, then we've just done the whole lot. That is just smashing it out of the park, really. Two islands in one day. There it is. Le Beast. The big bitch. The big bitch. On the beach. Le Biche. As we like to call her. Because she is a very special Biche. With a shit starting engine. But it is okay. Because we forgive her.
Good money for this experience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something's got to happen. <laughs> Oh dear, the engine has stopped. What will this mean? Well, they'll have to paddle. We've still got some big waves. We still have a long way to go. 
and we are drifting towards the Western Supermare Pier, which is not good. So, paddle away, boys, get us to shore. Now, it turns out that it was the fuel can. There's a little vent on the top which has to be open, otherwise, you get a vacuum in the can and it doesn't feed fuel. Now, because we'd been on the sea for quite a long time and there'd been a lot of vibration, it had actually spun itself closed. And once I realised this, I was able to get the engine started, but uh, not just yet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but at least we weren't in the most horrible stuff. We're quite close to shore, but it still could get ugly. Oh, yeah, mate. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, thanks to a can of easy start and some deft pulling by Mr. Dylan Rhodes, we managed to get the engine started. It was a little bit rough, but we didn't realise that the vent was closed on the top of the can. So slowly and surely, and with quite a bit of revving, we managed to get the boat to shore and <laughs> we didn't care how we got it to shore as long as we got it to shore because we didn't like the look of that pier which was coming up rather quickly otherwise so here we go here we go the engine into a mode whereby it's at an angle now so the prop is out of the water and it means that we can basically operate in very shallow water without catching a prop but it is literally we're very close to shore so somebody's gonna have to jump out and pull the boat in face that's a man's face he's happy to be alive slight wry smile now you can see we're close to shore he knows we've made it <laughs> well done mate Now you may not be getting this, but our feet are sinking um, a couple of feet into mud here. So that's why we're all walking a bit weird. 
and uh, some people boots are coming off in the mud and all sorts of stuff so it's pretty crazy and it, it means you you can't you can't make very good um, time as you're trying to sort of uh, pull the boat along So now we're basically in shallow mud. Um, I've left two people with the boat whilst I go and get the car and come down, reverse it down the beach as much as I can on the rocks that you can see there. And then we take the engine off and then we lift the boat onto the, uh, onto the back of the trailer and away to go. But we can't get the trailer in that mud. So we have to keep that on the rocks. And to here to make everything as light as possible we've got to get everything out of the boat put it on land and then when we get the engine off the boat will be much lighter not that it's that light and the engine isn't that light but we've got to make it as light as possible so we've got to decant everything and if you didn't know this is what exploring was like with a boat now you do I'll set that on. Yeah. Yeah. I fucking kill him, I think. Cheers. Oh God. Right, all I've got to do now is let these guys hang around for 10 minutes whilst I go and get the car, reverse it with the trailer yeah. back down the beach. Yeah. Okay, it's going to take about 10 minutes. Okay, mate. And they've got to stop it getting on those sharp rocks. And we've got to lift the engine and the boat onto the back of the car and then we're off. But don't mess around with the water, folks. If you don't know what you're doing, yeah, watch the drone footage in a separate video.